to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Joining us now, speaking of height, five metres would be a nice wave height, wouldn't it? Associate Professor in the School of Mathematics and Physical Sciences, Mike Malin, welcome. Hi. How are you? Uh, good, thanks. Yeah. Wave power, Mike. We hear a lot about wind power, particularly controversial in some parts of the country. We hear a lot about solar power. Not so much about wave power. Yeah, well, it's a um, it's not a it's a problem that really hasn't quite been cracked yet. I mean, there's a lot of um, energy there. Mm. If you go down to the beach, you can just see them rolling in. Yeah, well, anyone day. that's been dumped or sucked under by the surf, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it is a massive amount of energy, isn't it? So how how do we harness it though? Yeah, well, the um, and Australia is actually really well placed to harness it as well because it's got a lot of um, wave, you know, for it's got a lot of coastline and people live near the coastline, so it seems like it's a um, and it's free. You don't have to pay for it, you know, to dig up the ground. But um, it's a very challenging problem to extract the power. So it's one of those technologies that is almost there and not quite there. So, um, you know, we I think that uh, it will be something that will be cracked. And I think in 20 years' time, maybe we'll have people complaining or protesting about the building of, um, you know, wave energy farms. But, if it, but we're waiting to get to that point yet. Surfers will be having mass paddle outs saying, no, don't do it on my break. I love <laughs> that- it. Yeah, that's the dream, basically, if it gets to that point. Yeah. But I, I recall talking to someone a couple of years ago now from Western Australia, and they were pretty confident that they had some sort of turbine technology in the surf, whereby the wave motion, it wasn't actually, we're thinking about the crashing waves. No, it no, wasn't it's not so much the that. crashing no, wave. No, it, no, what, no, it's what is not. It? Yeah, because it's, it's actually when the wave, if you look out at the beach, it's when the wave's further out as it's coming in. So, so it's almost the swell, isn't it's it? It's the really? swell, yeah, before it's broken. Because that's where the um, the, en- the energy is easy to extract and it's more regular. So it's, it's a bit some distance off. Yeah, they, In Western Australia, they've built a wave power. So Australia, in some sense, is leading the world. There is actually a um, wave power plant, you know, in a prototype, which is producing um, electricity, which is being used. Okay. So it's... I mean, the question is not really about, you know, it's a very economic question. They've got to try and make it so that it can compete with these other forms of energy. So there's there's another whole issue. So Because the ocean's a tough place to be. This is one of the biggest problems. Yeah, there's a bit of a joke that there's a wave power, there's these various wave power hubs where people can go and prototype all their... Um, plans for wave power, and you know the the so you can and you can plug in and test it out. There's one off the coast of Plymouth and places like that. So you know if you if you come up with your idea, you can go and test it in this ocean environment. See, does it work? And uh, you know the the joke is that the seafloor around that is just littered with people's designs that have been destroyed. Well, of course, I mean you've got not only the intense power, but the corrosive nature yeah, exactly. of the salt water, no, the wind. No, no, it's, it's, exactly. It's a not, it's a difficult environment to operate. And I think yeah, the corrosive power of the seawater is a problem. But the real killer is that you can get these, you know, unlike the wind, you know, we, it was easier to sort of turn off a turbine or it can only blow so hard that, you know, you go down to the beach, the, the regular swell can be, you know, of the order of one or two metres, but you can get these every year events that are of the order of five metres or ten metres and that is just an enormous force which your um, wave power device, which is designed to couple with the waves, so it wants to interact with them, so it's going to feel a huge force. Mm. So where are we? You know, what else is there to say on this at this point? You said it's, you know, potentially 20 years away, but in, in the interim... I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I think it's still in, a little bit in the realms of the mad inventors that some brilliant idea might come from left field. So we've got the, the basic designs our uh, people have tried out, but there's still some debate around whether we've got the optimal design because it's, it's, there's a lot of things you've got to factor in, and the key one being cost. So if you can extract only, a, you know, you can, if you can extract the power, even if you're only getting 10% of the power there, but you can get it cheaply, it could be... Um, Cost you know, effective. Yeah, so there's... And um, it's quite it's quite a fun area because of that because you know because my interest is not totally in way, my research interest is in understanding the mathematics behind it helping people to develop models for their ideas I'm not coming up with the crazy ideas but there's a lot of different ideas floating around so. and I should imagine that the mathematics of it is pretty complex yeah it and is. variable yeah it is yeah it is and it's a it's a fun topic to work in because you can you've got a practical um, goal and you've got these people who with, who've got their designs but who want to understand and be able to model it better and make predictions and work out the forces, you know, in a computer model so that we can kind of help them to design it. And then we've got these, you know, we can go back and have a look at what's going on in the actual field and measurements and compare our models to that. Oh, it's, look, it, it, 
it sounds a little futuristic, but on the other side of things, it sounds very doable. And uh, you guys at the uni are onto it, and that means that it's you know can't be that far off, surely. Yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely going to be cracked. I mean, there's the powers there, and someone's going to come up with something. Humans are pretty ingenious. We've invented the iPhone. This can't be that hard. You know? Exactly. Associate Professor Mike Mylan, thank you so much for joining us and, and giving us a little bit more of a taste on what we're working on here at the University of Newcastle. And wave power, I say, as long as it doesn't wreck a great beach and we can do it somewhere that no one wants to swim, bring it on. Thank you so much, Thanks a Mike. Lot.